Welcome back to Benefits Part 2, Retirement. I'm again Samuel Ensnot from the Benefits team. To start things off, we will talk about the FICA replacement plan. This retirement plan is uh, automatic enrollment for anyone that is in a postdoctoral associate position or was previously in an OPS non-student adjunct faculty or medical resident position. So this is the mandatory plan for these four position groups. Participants will contribute 7.5% of their compensation to an account in their name. Money is deposited into a private retirement plan instead of going to Social Security. The Enrollment in this plan is automatic, so you do not have to do anything. If you are or were previously in one of those positions, you were automatically enrolled with your first paycheck. The plan administrator for your retirement funds in the FICA replacement plan is TIAA. Once the initial contribution has been made, you can register and view your account online at the TIAA.org website. Investment allocation elections can be changed online through that TIAA.org website. And if you do not make an allocation election, your contribution will be directed to a target date fund based on your date of birth. The annual fee of the FICO replacement plan is $25 a year and it is administered quarterly at $6.25. Now we will talk about the other retirement plans. These are the plans available to employees that are in USPS, AMP, or faculty uh, positions. Uh, depending on the plan, uh, USPS will only be eligible for the FRS plans. We will start with the FRS pension plan, which is a defined benefits plan. Much like Social Security, it is a lifetime pension that is paid monthly. This plan rewards longevity and is available to all the pay groups, AMP, faculty, and USPS. Next is its sibling plan, the FRS investment plan. This is a defined contribution plan, meaning you have an investment that will grow and will be a lump sum of money available to you to uh, reinvest or move or uh, annuitize or withdraw when you retire. This plan is eligible for AMP, faculty, and USPS. Last but not least, is the State University System Optional Retirement Program. Much like the FRS Investment Plan, this is a defined contribution plan. However, unlike the FRS plans, this plan is only eligible for employees in AMP or faculty positions. For any faculty members a part of the College of Medicine, this is your mandatory plan and you will need to enroll in this plan. You will not be able to enroll in the FRS plans. Uh, for anyone else, uh, you must choose between one of these plans. If you do not make a choice, then you will automatically default into the FRS investment plan. And it is important to note, with the uh, state, the, the SUSORP, the State University System Optional Retirement Program, that plan is only available uh, to agencies that are part of the state university system. Whereas with the Florida Retirement System, those plans are not only available, not just available to the uh, state university system, but other Florida and county agencies. With the FRS plans, you have the option to enroll in one plan and down the road you may use a second election to switch to the other FRS plan. Whereas with the SUSORP, when you elect that plan, 
that will be your plan and you will not be able to elect another plan while employed with UCF. So let's go over a little more detail about the plans themselves. For all of these plans, there will be a mandatory employee contribution of 3%. That 3% is being deducted immediately from your first paycheck and going into a non-interest bearing account awaiting your uh, enrollment and will then from there that 3% go into your actual retirement choice. For the uh, employer contributions, depending on the plan will determine what the contributions are. The contributions for the FRS pension plan are not as important because the FRS pension plan is a pension that is based on a formula that factors in three things. First is your uh, years of service, how many years you've worked with an FRS employer. Second is your age at the moment you retire, whether you're normal retirement age or, or early retiree. And then third will be your average salary for the eight highest years of salary of service. Those years of service are measured based on fiscal year. For the FRS investment plan, the employer contribution will be 3.3%. However, if you are in a special risk position, position typically like law enforcement, the rates will be higher. Or if you're in an executive service, also the rates will be, uh, employer contributions will be higher. Finally, with the SUSORP, uh, the employer contribution is at 5.14%. An interesting thing to note with the SUSORP is although you have a mandatory 3%, you may voluntarily contribute additional monies into that retirement plan you can contribute on your own voluntarily an additional 5.14%, meaning you would be contributing 3% mandatory, 5.14%, up to 5.14% voluntary for a total of 8.14% that you would be contributing from your end if you elect. The SUSOR plan is considered a 403B plan and it is administered by uh, five, one of five provider companies. Uh, the provider companies are TIAA, AIG Valid, uh, AXA, VOIA, and MetLife. These instructions for enrollment into these plans will be found in your guide. It is important to note that retirement plans have vesting periods. Vesting is the amount of time you must work before you own the plan and are eligible for retirement benefits. For the FRS pension plan, the pension rewards longevity. The longer you're employed, the better your pension would be. As a result, the vesting period is at a higher rate. You must work eight years in an FRS position to be eligible to receive a pension. If you do not work the eight years, you will not be eligible for a pension and would only be eligible if you came back to work in a future position to continue adding years of service. You do have the option to request a refund of the 3% that you've contributed if you've chosen the FRS pension and have left employment and do not see yourself returning to work in an FRS position ever. The FRS investment plan has just a one year vesting period. That means that in one year, you will own not only the 3% that you've contributed, but the 3.3% that UCF is also contributing. If you do not work one year 
with the FRS investment plan, you will have the option to work in the future to add on uh, to the years of service, um, but you would want to do that within five years because after five years of uh, change in employment, um, the 3% would automatically be refunded to you by the FRS. Finally, the SUSORP is immediate vesting, meaning from day one, you not only own the contributions that you have put into the plan, but you also own the employer contributions that have been put in. A side note, the FRS plans have an a disability retirement option available to you. If you are considered completely and permanently disabled, you have the option to enroll in a full pension, meaning there's no um, penalty for uh, leaving the pension early or leaving the investment early. Now let's talk about enrollment. For the FRS pension and FRS investment plans, the enrollment deadline is the last day of the eighth month following your date of hire. And as stated earlier, if you do not enroll in either of these, in any of the retirement plans, you will automatically default into the FRS investment plan. Uh, for special risk, the default would actually be the FRS pension if you do not enroll in a plan with, within the deadline. For the SUSORP, the enrollment deadline is your hire date plus 89 days. If you do not elect the SUSORP within the 18, uh, your hire date and 89 days, you will be defaulted into the FRS pension, and if no election is made by the end of the eighth month after your month of hire, you will be automatically enrolled in the FRS investment plan. For more details about the enrollment instructions and deadlines, please refer to the benefits guide. A helpful resource when choosing between the different retirement plans is the FRS financial guidance line. This service is available to everyone, even if you are planning on enrolling in the SUSORP. This resource will still be available to you during your initial uh, enrollment deadline period. The FRS guidance line is a free, unbiased financial planning and counseling service center that will assist you with making the decision and in the future with your actual FRS plan. The uh, providing company that provides these services is Ernst & Young, which is a financial planner and also an accounting firm uh, that does not have any products uh, to sell. Uh, they are just going to give you unbiased advice. You also have the resource of the FRS.com website uh, where you can manage your account and use different tools from that website to help make a decision between the different FRS options. If you enroll in the SUSORP, you will continue to receive reminders in the mail from the FRS regarding your FRS en enrollment deadline. You can simply disregard these reminders if you have already enrolled in the SUSORP. And if you are in the FRS investment plan and pension plan, then this is just a reminder that you have 30 days to enroll. Reemployment after retirement. If you are retired from the FRS pension, FRS investment, or SUSORP retirement plans, a minimum of six 
calen full calendar months is required before you are you before you can be rehired. <clears throat> If you come back before the six-month minimum, you will be financially liable for repayment if in violation. Monthly benefit distributions will be suspended during the months 7 through 12 if re-employed. If you are re-employed after one year of retirement, then there are no suspensions of your distribution benefits. Now, we've talked about the mandatory retirement plans, which you will have to choose between one of those three plans. But in addition to that, you may choose, if you'd like, a voluntary retirement plan to put additional monies aside for your retirement. You have two retirement options to choose from for the voluntary plans. You have a 403B option and you have a 457 retirement option. Both of these options are the same thing as a 401K. With the 403B options, we have this option because we are a education institute. And so the IRS allows us to have a 403B. The 403B is handled by the university and the university has been able to set up three main companies as your provider companies. Fidelity, TIAA, and AIG Valic are the three companies to choose from. You have the option with the 403B to have a pre-tax retirement contribution or choose to have a Roth post-tax, also known as tax-free contribution. Pre-tax contributions are beneficial in the sense that you have more money immediately being put aside to your investments, and it also lowers your tax bracket as those are pre-tax contributions. However, at the moment of withdrawal, you will then assess the tax fee. With Roth options, you are making a deduction after taxes have been taken out, so the monies that are being put into that investment are, have already been taxed and therefore are tax-free when you withdraw those monies in the future. The 457 plan, unfortunately, only offers pre-tax. There are no Roth options with the 457. You may contribute a total of one of $19,500 into either the 403B or the 457. For anyone age 50 and up, a catch-up provision is included where you may contribute an additional $6,500 into the 403B and or into the 457. <clears throat> the benefit of having both a 403B and a 457 is that it is possible to contribute the cap for a 403B and then to contribute the an additional cap of the $19,500 or the 6,500 catch up into the 457 at the same time. Re voluntary retirement contributions are in addition to the FRS or SUSORP plans. UCF does not match voluntary employee contributions. Enrollment changes can be made at any time during the year. Enrollment instructions are located in your benefits guide. For the 403B plans, there are three options to choose from. And to help you choose between the three companies, the university 
has uh, set up a fiduciary in the company CapTrust who will be able to provide free unbiased guidance between the different companies. For more information about CapTrust, here is a video which also has some great advice on investing. Everybody feels like they're behind the eight ball. Nobody has ever said, I retired with too much money. It's really easy to put off the decision to start saving. We all have a lot of priorities, especially when it comes to our money. It could be student loans. It could be credit card debt. It could be saving for a house. These are all the things that we have to grapple with when we're trying to decide whether or not we want to pay ourselves first. Time is so valuable when you're trying to save and accumulate money. Even if you can save just a small amount, just getting started, getting in the habit, is going to put you on the road to financial success. You need to shoot for 15% of your pay to be saved. Now, you're not going to likely do that all in one fell swoop. So think about it in terms of starting maybe at 3 or 4 or 5%, and then every year you work, increase that. Also, remember that your employer might be contributing to that number. If your employer gives you 3%, then you only have to save 12. If they're giving you 5 or 6%, you may only have to save 9 or 10. Don't worry what the number is at the end. Worry about what you can do today. If you are able to start saving at even a small rate and just do it over and over and over again, you're going to get that benefit of time, and you're also going to find out that in 10 years, you're going to have more money than you ever would have thought was possible. One of the things that you really need to consider is longevity. What does that mean? That means how long people are living. Do you have relatives who are in their 90s? Have you ever had to buy that birthday card that says, Happy 100th Birthday? It's becoming much more common, and that means that you have to provide for yourself for a longer period of time. You want to retire at 65 or 67? Accumulating enough to provide for yourself for 20 years is really what you want to be thinking about. Whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, you need to be saving some money now towards that retirement goal. If you're watching this video, you have a great benefit from your employer. You have access to financial help through CapTrust. You can speak with somebody about your personal situation, get independent help, and put you on the path to financial success. Knowledge is power. All you have to do is make an appointment or give us a call, and we'll help you make good decisions about your financial future. So again, as the video indicated, you can make an appointment with a CapTrust advisor by visiting the website www.captrustadvice.com or you can call a retirement counselor at 1-800-967-9948. Additional employee benefits are available to you on the following two links, which includes information about our employee assistance program through the Health Advocate Organization, as well as our tuition wa uh, waiver program provided by student accounts. There is also information regarding the health and wellness resources available to employees, including the faculty and staff gym, the Recreation Wellness Center, and others. The following some are some of the annual events that take place with UCF. Um, the, the Financial Wellness Series takes place every spring, usually in the month of April. The Financial Wellness Series has been canceled for the year 2020 as a precaution to the COVID-19 coronavirus. The UCF Benefits Fair takes place in the fall, usually in the month of October. This is a wonderful opportunity during the open enrollment period for employees to meet with insurance and retirement vendors about enrollment opportunities.
We understand this can be an overwhelming amount of information. To combat that, we are offering our help through enrollment labs. These are over the phone, one-on-one -on -one sessions that you can set up as an appointment by calling our main line 407-823-2771 or by emailing benefits at ucf.edu and a benefits rep will reach out to you to set up an enrollment lab. We want to thank you so much for choosing UCF to be your new home and we here at Benefits are here to help assist in any way possible. Go Knights and charge on!